Missouri has won three of their last four. Tennessee, two straight wins, and we're underway at Neyland Stadium. And Missouri will start at the 25-yard line as we check in third member of our team, Jamie Erdahl. Jamie. Brad, it was one year ago this week. Tennessee football found themselves in an abyss they just could not see their way out of. A month later, Jeremy Pruitt was hired, and he knew he needed veterans to buy in for him to find success. Well, those seniors who were honored here today bought in and they delivered and we spoke with them this week they said we want to be known as the class that did not give up we faced a ton of adversity as a group in football and in life we know we will deliver because of what we went through only 13 seniors honored out here today including walk on so they don't have a lot of senior leadership they have no starters on offense that are seniors but their defense is packed with them here's the first carry of the day and it's Larry Roundtree a good run. Here's the guy that Gary was talking about, Drew Locke. Sensational numbers. He can move into the number two spot all time if he has even an average game today. In all time passing yards, you see the touchdowns, and you'll see as this game goes along the arm talent that he possesses. Roundtree out to the 40 yard line as we take a look at the Chick fil A lineups. Joining Drew Locke on the offensive side of the ball including the tight end Kendall Blanton and he's got some big shoes to fill because they're normal tight end out right now and he was is a great player and hopefully he'll be back in time for the bowl game from the four second down and five Locke fires a dart on a slant big play down to the 30 yard line to Emmanuel Hall boom 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 what a rocket arm RPO, no safety deep, don't have to guess, throw the slant, and that ball wasn't in the air for half a second. That's how you play quarterback right there, and why there's NFL scouts at this game watching Drew Locke play, because he's got that type of arm talent that the NFL drools about. A 30-yard pickup to the 30. First down, Missouri, three wide receivers set with Roundtree. Right behind Drew Luck. Looks to be changing things up. Here comes a corner blitz, a handoff round tree going to the left side, and they got about three out of it against the Tennessee defense. That looks like this. We talked about the seniors up front and in the back end. Kyle Phillips we talked to him yesterday. Micah Abernathy, senior as well, in that safety spot. Right now, they just like to slow down this Missouri offense on this opening drive. Again, a sidearm toss and a first down. <laughs> Find the hole, let it go. And you've got his kind of security blanket in Emmanuel Hall. Speedster, look at your fake. You get the linebacker going the wrong way, you have the hole right behind him. And now he goes down the sideline. Tips. Incomplete. Alante Taylor, the freshman at the last moment, got his left hand up there. Well, Emmanuel Hall, you run the slant one time and then you go behind him. And Taylor, the true freshman, oh, just enough to get his hand up and make the play. You know, you talk about Drew Locke's arm, but it's really been the story in this game the last two matchups is Missouri running the and football. player downfield, number 77 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat the down. Paul Adams, the right tackle. Yeah, and that's that RPO. You take the risk. The linemen don't know if the quarterback's going to hand it off or throw the ball. And you just have to live with a couple of those. How aggressively will they call it? You get three yards to go downfield, and on that one, it was called. So that backs it up to the 23-yard line. Every run has been to the left so far in this football game. Two tight ends in there right now on first and 15, and it's an end around to Johnson, and finds a little room over there on the corner before he's knocked out of bounds. So the opening couple of minutes is taken Missouri from HL 25 down to the 15 of Tennessee. Both teams really talked about the same thing. Both coaches, you got to win the rushing game. Who's going to stop it? Who's going to run for the most yards? That's what both coaches said to us prior to the game. This is Roundtree. Only about two up the middle. Kyle Phillips, one of the aforementioned seniors in on the stop. Part of the rebuild for Barry Odom was bringing in a more balanced attack. 
Offensive coordinator Derek Dooley, the old head coach here of Tennessee. And last week they did it exactly the way they want to against Vanderbilt. They ran for 253 yards and they passed for 253 yards. And they were 60% on their third downs last week as well. And that's what they've got right here, third down at five. Tennessee creeping up there like they might bring an extra rusher. Play clock down at two. And it's going to be a false start, it looked like, unless it was too much time. Might have been a delay a game. It was close. False start. Offense, number 77. Human Owens. Five yard penalty. Third down. So it's going to make it third and ten. All right, tackle Paul Adams right there, number 70. Same, you see him move. He's got that matchup with Daryl Taylor coming off a four-sack game against Kentucky. He had to be ready. He's seen all the snaps. I actually think that's a good matchup. Senior Paul Adams against Daryl Taylor, number 19. Good matchup to watch. Good football right there. Third down and 10 from just outside the 17. Here comes a blitz up the middle. Locke lets it fly to the corner. Just overshot his intended receiver, Hall, and it was Taylor again in the coverage. Good job by the freshman. One of the advantages of being able to throw without stepping into it and have that big arm is if the blitz comes, you can retreat and still get rid of it at the same time. Had the matchup, pretty good coverage. Taylor forced a perfect pass, and it was not. Tucker McCann is 18 of 26 on the year. This will be a 35 yard field goal attempt. Snap a little bit off, but the kick is up and in. So, Missouri. Great hold. It was. Yes. He got it up just in time. 35 yard field goal. Missouri strikes first here at Neyland Stadium. Adam Zucker in New York with this Ford update. Number 10 Ohio State and Maryland back and forth. It's the Terps on third and goal. Jay Sean Jones reaching out, fumbles. Shikazim Okonkwo recovers for the Terps touchdown. Ohio State answers Dwayne Haskins to Benjamin Victor. They are tied up in the final minute. Terps trying to drive right now. Brad, Gary, Jamie. All right, Zuck, keep us posted on that one. You watch your sports news and highlights straight without the noise. Stream CBS Sports HQ, all new 24 7 Sports News Network, available on your phone, computer, and connected TV devices. CBS Sports HQ, sports for the true fans. Gary's on air following our games every Saturday. Tucker McCann, who just hit the 35 yard field goal, set to kick away. Nigel Warrior in Madre, London, back deep for Tennessee. This will be Nigel from about the four. And he's not going to make it. Well, he will make it to the 20, not to the 21-yard line. We take a look at the Chick-fil-A starting, in this case, quarterback. And then the lineup to follow. And it's Jared Garantano, the guy we talked about last year. Just under 1,000 yards passing and only four touchdowns. And you can see the vast improvement he's had this season. And a little change-up for Tennessee last week against Georgia, uh, Brad. A uh, little question about too much run on first down, but on the first play of each of their first four drives, Tyson Helton, the offensive coordinator, went deep with the passes, and it worked. Their first snap from the 21. Uh, that one didn't work for anything. Ty Chandler. Should have gone deep. <laughs> no kidding. No gain. Gail Garrett in on the stop. The rest of the offense. Marquez Callaway has been his big play receiver. He's a great player with a 50 50 balls out on the sidelines. Talked to him yesterday. If you want to lose a finger, shake his hand. <laughs> He's a strong guy, isn't he? <laughs> He's a great kid. Second down at 10. Chandler tailback in an eye backfield with Eli Wolf playing fullback right now. They're going to come with an end around, though, and it's Jordan Murphy. And Murphy is going backwards. Nice job by the Mizzou defense, yeah, led little, by Tyree Gillespie. Little different look on balanced line that time. Missouri adjusted very quickly to it, shifted properly, and we're in the right spot to get nothing out of it. They had that one read beautifully. Yes, they did. Missouri's defense, the guy that you'll see make a lot of tackles, is number 47 in the middle. He's already got one today and 87 for the year. Missouri commits a lot of people to stop the run. They're susceptible to the deep ball. They play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. Trip receivers to the right for Garantano. If he has time to throw, he will not. And it's Gillespie 
on the safety blitz. And it's three and out for Tennessee. Uh, this is reminiscent of our Alabama game here, isn't it? Yeah. Same thing happened early from the blind side. I don't know if they had enough peoples. Let's see. No, they did not. They had four coming that direction. And that time, Ty Chandler never was able to get over there and help his quarterback. That's one of those plays where your running back, if he has a fake, has to give it up and go get the block. Joe Doyle to punt. Rashard Floyd is back around midfield for Missouri. This is high but relatively short. Fair catch taken right about where he was standing around the 47. Jared Carantano is going to say could you quit talking about how tough I am from now on. <laughs> yeah we don't need to know your toughness anymore. He's always got his eyes watering. Right. We hate to see that. Right. Right? Took a big hit there. Missouri with a 3 0 lead with the ball back when we come back. Gary, you got a Drew Locke comparison? I think so, right? The type of style of throws, those sidearms, goes back, reminds me of the arm strength and the arm angles of Matthew Stafford. You know, Matt Bomber as well. Drew likes to go deep with his throw, but the two styles and arm strength and the way they like to kind of flip it around sidearm, that's the closest in my memory to uh, I've seen here in the SEC. We actually saw two of those sidearm jobs on their first, first drive. drive. Yeah, it's really a good weapon throwing around those blitzes. And you know, you see some a lot of the quarterbacks in the NFL do because you can retreat and throw at the same time. Aaron Rodgers really good at it as well. Yeah, he had a couple of those the other night despite the loss. Damari Crockett in the backfield now with Locke from the 47. They fake it to him. Locke looking left the whole way goes there. Uh, and the deep out good for eight. Comeback throw. Clear across from the right hash all the way to the far sideline. I mean, he just lets it go. Now, you just quit. He's got confidence in your arm to rip it out there. Eight-yard route like that. If you can't zip it, you have no chance. Did he catch it? Oh, no. No, maybe not. I don't think so. That one should come back. Drop ball. John Bibles, our replay official today. This is the plays under review. This one's pretty easy. And it hit the ground there. Rich yeah. Richard Floyd that was the guy that had it. Still just going back to the throw itself. People don't realize sometimes from that hash to that well, far side is a long after ways. Review, the ruling of the field is an incomplete pass. We'll be second down at the previous spot. Please reset the game clock. Nine minutes, 22 seconds. You know, Nine, two, two. It's interesting, Brad. I didn't have that type of arm, but it was actually easier for me when I got to the NFL because the hashes are closer together. Right. So I had that far throw to the sideline that I wasn't really good at in huh. college. Boy, and we, you took it at Jason, Jared Garantano right there. He's still a little losing from that hit yeah. that he took. Chris is warming up. So that hit on Garantano might keep him out of the game. Yep. Meanwhile, back on the field, Missouri's got second down and 10 from the 47. Crockett shifts from left to right. Lock fires. Great play. Nice play by Batuli. Let's check in with Jamie. Yeah, just as you guys see, Jared Carantano head in hands in a ton of pain. Tyson Helton's been talking to him, but he also turned to Keller Chris to tell him to warm up. We've seen Chris come in in these settings before, but honestly, we haven't seen it so early in the game with Garantano. Well, you don't even know if the doctors have ruled him out. You know, doesn't have his helmet. Exactly. Might have taken it a precaution. That's why they're down there in this situation, because we all wanted to go back in. Oh, we're fine, we're fine. Yeah. But someone needs to protect the player. Third down at 10, four wide out grouping. Jonathan Johnson, the motion man, lock back pedals, fires complete. And whoo, big shot. It was Johnson with a catch. But it was Bryce Thompson with a hit. You know, I think the misalignment by Tennessee confused. See, only two defenders are out here, and Drew Locke thinks he hands it, but late. Out comes Kirkland, and that's why he misread the defense. He thought he had an easy pitch and catch. And because Tennessee misaligned early, they got the beneficiary of an extra guy there on the zone. Bryce Thompson gave up the receiver to the safety out there, but man, what a shot he yep. put on and forces a punch. This one, you just 
just have to let it go and it actually rolls backwards across the 10 out around Boy, the 12 yard Darren line. Darren Kirkland made a great defensive play on the pass to the tight end. Then he misaligns and runs out there and makes another one. Well, Jared Garantano's got the helmet back on. We'll see if he's going to take the field or if it's Keller Christ. Jared Garantano in that last series is another look at the shot that he took. Yeah, we called and asked for a clarification from Steve Saw just to make sure that the back of the helmet kit is equal to the front of the helmet. This did not fall in the category of targeting, but just for clarity, if you can hit the back of the head, that could be called too. Right. Wasn't in this case, I don't think no, his he... arm rode from the shoulders upward. I think it was a good non call, but still, he felt it. No doubt, and when he sat on the sideline, we were wondering if he'd come back in. He has come back in. And Tyson Helton, the offensive coordinator, said, I've coached a lot of quarterbacks in my day. He's my choice as a guy that I'd take that will take one for the team. Yeah. He says he's the toughest dude I've ever been around a quarterback. He's, he's back in there. He's been proving it. They're going to throw here on first down. Maybe. Whoa. Well, didn't have a chance. Walter Palmore got in there. He'll get credit for the sack. I'll tell you, Tennessee. Better be able to handle Becker and Palmore, the two defensive tackles. They can blow up a game faster. We saw it with Q Williams. If Becker and Palmore, two really good SEC defensive tackles, get handling this Tennessee offensive line, it's going to be a very long day. Now it's second down and 20. Garantano will get under center. We'll see if he gives it off to Ty Chandler to try to get some room down there or if he's willing to throw. It's Chandler spinning for a couple. But maybe the four, and that's about it. Trey Smith, the best lineman that Tennessee has, again, hasn't been in there now for a few weeks. Second time this year that he's had blood clot problems in his lungs. Trey, uh, we wish him the best. He's going to Boston tomorrow to have that whole situation looked at. He had that in the offseason. They thought they had it under control. He came back, played a couple of games, and then had the same issues loss of breath and that type of thing during the practice. And, uh, they immediately decided that he's done for right now and whether or not he'll be back we'll have to wait and see. Third and 18 they're just going to play it safe and try to punt this thing out of here. Well and they should I mean one of the things we talked to Barry Odom about his defense. I think coach frankly Tennessee's worried that their defensive line excuse me their offensive line might be the weakness of their offense. Your defensive line is the strength of your defense. Do you have to dominate? And he just said yes. We've got to win, and we've got to win that matchup big. And so far, they have. They sure have. Through this half a quarter, and a rugby-style punt this time. Again, even with everybody clearing out, it's going to be about the same spot they started last time. Missouri, that is. This one's at the 48-yard line. With 6:35 remaining in the first quarter. Jared Garantano has been roughed up again in this first quarter, but Missouri only up three. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Jamie Erdahl, our CBS crew, Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. Beautiful November day, not so good for Jared Garantano so far. Missouri with a 3 0 lead as they start from the 48. Larry Roundtree again, the tailback will get the call. And Roundtree, good game. Rotry and Crockett, good one two punch. Crockett, a little over 700 yards on the season. Roundtree closing in on 800. Both good receivers as well out of the backfield. You know, when I watched the second half of Missouri versus Vanderbilt, they had it going. The lock was 11 for 13 in the half. They were running the ball. I mean, they had the one two punch going on offense. This time, no game for Roundtree. Nice job by Paul Bain. I got Tyler Beatty too at uh, tailback, so forgot to add him. But there's the numbers coming in on the season. And Gary mentioned they had great balance last week, exactly the same amount of yardage through the air and on the ground. In their last two games against Tennessee, they had 853 yards rushing. <laughs> to take that any day. Yeah. Third down and five. Little draw play fake and then the throws complete. <laughs> How would you like to play linebacker nowadays? That looked like a run all the way, didn't they? Yes. Pulled the guard. They make the strong fake watch. They pull. Here's the linebacker. Oh, I'm hitting that. I got no idea. No, I don't. 
Oh boy. Oh boy. And Johnson with the catch and a first down at the 39. When we were visiting with Derek Dooley, you know, he spent five years in the NFL before he came back with the Dallas Cowboys. He came back and says, oh my, has college football changed? Yeah. There's, there he is. The whole RPO thing. Ironically, the last time he was in this stadium, he got fired the next day after losing to Missouri Sorry. as a Tennessee head coach. But it was great to see Derek yesterday back in the SEC. Lock going long. Man out there. We're going to have a flag in the end zone. Pass interference on Nigel Warrior. It's probably a good pass interference. And this is what uh, Missouri does. Excuse me, Brad. They max protect. They make sure the lock is going to get a throw. They send out just three players. They make sure that they're going to get a deep ball. And then there's no place pass on the, the field. Defense. defense number 18. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Really no spot on the field that you're afraid that Drew Locke will not throw the ball. He's got the arm to just zip it anywhere and he can throw it flat footed and that's the combination now run the ball enough keep him off balance and hit him with the big play. Feels like Tennessee's just hanging on here doesn't it? It really does. It's still just three to nothing. Yes. Back to the ground game. Ron Tree. Good run that time. Gets it down to the 17 yard line. Here's Derek Dooley when he was the head coach here from 2010 to 2012. And then there was an interim coach, Jim Cheney, who took over. And then, as Gary said, Derek goes to the Cowboys for five years. He said, I could grow my beard, I could walk around town, go out to dinner with my wife. Nobody cared who I was. Yeah, no talk and now I'm back into this stuff. Yeah, no talk radio <laughs> about the tight end coach, is there? It is not. Second down at four. And a good job by Shy Tuttle. Yes. One of the seniors, uh, Captain Nose Tackle. We talked about this before the game of giving some acknowledgement to big number two right there. Came in as a four or five star player, such a bright future, dealt with injuries. You know, he doesn't make those fabulous tackle for loss plays, but he eats blockers up front. Very unselfish player and a real asset to the team now in their rush defense. See if they can get a stop on third down and six. Now let's play a blitz party on, they, on these situations. Here they come. Here they come. Lock over the middle. Got the first down throw a little bit more down to the 10. Barrett Bannister, redshirt freshman out of Fayetteville, Arkansas, has got the first down. Yeah, it's just so easy. From that shotgun position, you get a fourth year quarterback. Barristers in the slot. It's so easy in that situation. You got Warrior trying to not tip off where the blitz is coming, and then right where the vacant linebacker was, you just throw it's almost like a handoff for a first down. It's right at the 10 yard line, so it's first and goal. If you're going to blitz a shotgun quarterback with this kind of arm talent, you almost got to go bump and run and come at him because there's just too much room to throw those short balls. Kendall Blanton, number 11, the tight end switch from one side to the other. And it's Roundtree for a couple. Micah Abernathy came up from the secondary, along with Kyle Phillips to make the hit. Barry Odom, his third year as a head coach at Missouri. He's trying and to get a timeout, I think. Yeah, you got a senior quarterback in there, and he's looking at the clock just like Barry was, and uh, it didn't gain a lot of yards, but I think Drew Locke was in control there. He knew he could get the snap off in time. Second and goal. Two tight ends. Again, Tennessee shifting defensively. Yeah, it's on balance line. They've, now they got it set up right. Round three. Yep. Same play. Got it to the five, but it's going to be third and goal. Took a couple of uh, shifts to get set up right, but once they got lined up, they were able to stop the running play. You see the on balance line to the right. All the receivers to the right side had to shift it properly, and then you take on the blocks. Tuttle again does a good job inside. Third and goal just outside the five. And Drew Locke has been a willing runner. I saw him run an option play against Florida. He scored last week a touchdown. In this situation, that extra running back can be so important. He's got four rushing touchdowns on the year. Fires, corner, overshot everybody. And Tennessee comes up with a stop. 
Dominic Jacinto was the intended receiver. It's three on two coverage that time, and it was done perfectly by the Tennessee. Here's three on two. Look at it. You got to make sure that you switch properly, and Locke did not read it. Tennessee outplayed him. Good defense by that secondary, that young secondary for the ball. So Tucker McCann, who hit earlier from 35. Corey Fatoni will hold as he tries a 24-yard field goal here. Two big stops on that Tennessee defense. And it's up and good. It's actually a 23-yarder. Another good hold. So Tucker McCann has all the points so far. But Tennessee, their defense comes up with a big stop to force the field goal. And it's still Mizzou just up six. Back at Neyland Stadium, 23-yard uh, field goals made it 6-0. Jared Garantani, this is kind of bad when you've been sacked twice and you haven't even tried to pass yet. <laughs> three, <laughs> three plays minus nine yards, three plays <laughs> minus seven yards, no completions, two sacks, you're right. He's not even attempted a pass, he's been sacked twice. And they'll start this time from the 25 again. And Brad just ran it through for you. This is the first time he got hit right in the back of the head on the black on the from the blind side and then a sack he had to give up. And there he is on the bench. And you know, the last time I saw a guy with a look like that was when I went and visited Craig in the hospital. Our <laughs> producer who's back right now. He had that same kind of look when I went That's to right. visit him. Our Emmy winning producer, Craig yes. Silver's back in the saddle, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> on crutches nonetheless. Yes, but, but he's back. He's back. Garantano, now he's got a pass, and it's over the head of the intended receiver, Josh Palmer. It'll be second and ten after we check in with Adam Zucker in New York. Zuck. Oh, Ness, Ohio State scored to open overtime in College Park. Maryland's Tayon Fleet Davis reaches out for the touchdown. Matt Canada says, we're going for two in the win. Tyrell Pigram completely misses a wide open Jay Sean Jones. And the Buckeyes survive with still just one loss. Back to you. Oh, wow. Man, crazy finish in the Big Ten here. And the SEC, a blitz coming from Missouri on a run blitz, and it pays off. Loss of a yard. Man, Kale Gilbert was all over that one, the middle linebacker. Reads it so quick. Plays in that box. You know, from the outside, Therese Hall, number 24, and Randall Lee, number four, the two outside backers. But in that box, you got to deal with number 47 when you run the ball. He makes a lot of tackles. Yeah, here it is, third and 11 again. What are they, minus 17 yards in yeah, total and offense? Can right they now? block them here? Do they even need to bring the pressure? That's the question. Jordan Murphy in motion. Garantano just hoping he has time to let one fly. Does to the sideline, and it's broken up. Incomplete, no flag. Joshua Bledsoe on Jordan Murphy. Crowd didn't like it. Yeah, the ball was underthrown, and Murphy was coming back for the pass. The question is, did Bledsoe interfere? You could make an argument. Yep. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. He got there before the ball. Yeah, that me. ball could have been caught, and that would have been a big first down for this Tennessee trying to get out of this quarter. Remember, they had two stops for field goals. They're just trying to survive right now. Joe Doyle with this third punt and as many series for Tennessee. Oh, we got a beauty here. Back around the 35, fair catch by you, Floyd. You know, Ness, one thing I've learned, it might not be a full house, but the boos sound just as loud. They sound great. Yes. Tomorrow, he was a feared NFL player and is a best-selling author. Tim Green reveals his ALS diagnosis tomorrow on 60 Minutes. Great player at Syracuse. And then with the Atlanta Falcons, heck of a player, great writer. Boy, tough, tough story there there for Tim. We wish him the best. Known him for a long time. And one of the sharpest, brightest guys oh, ever, yeah. right? But Road scholar football. material yeah. type guy. At the 35, Missouri has their possessions so far, including a couple of field goals. Lock. Quick throw. Complete. Jonathan Johnson. 
And his first down throw. You know, Jonathan Johnson has not had a hundred yard game in any one game, but he has 41 catches coming in. He's kind of his go to slot receiver, catches the ball, possession receiver. You can see how confident Drew Locke is in throwing the ball to him. Yeah, the first quarter belongs to Missouri. Tennessee could get nothing going offensively, but their defense played pretty well. Six nothing, end to one. We'll return to Knoxville after this message and a word from your local station. Just about set to start the second quarter. Jared Garantano, during the time we left you at the end of one, is headed into the medical tent. Again, he's been sacked a couple of times already in the game. Tennessee without a first down so far. Meanwhile, Missouri with the lead and the ball. And we welcome you back to the booth. Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson. Barry Odom being a defensive minded head coach got used to play linebackers got to be happy that he hasn't given up a first down so far for sure you know I think when he came into this league the first thing Barry Odom noticed in the SEC you better build the offense and defensive line and so far that's what dominating this football game and their offense with Drew Locke coming up firing broken up incomplete Bryce Thompson second good play he's made today yeah and you know quietly Bryce Thompson another one of those true freshman corners or defensive backs has had a very good season for Tennessee. That was a real question mark coming into the season was how good could they be at corner. But Alante Taylor and Bryce Thompson has saved this Tennessee team. They're more than adequate and have bright futures at that position. So here's another third down. Missouri two out of five. You so know, far today. I, I know that Tennessee's losing six nothing but it feels like they're winning because it could be 14 nothing real easy. They barely had the ball block back to throw. And he's in trouble and down he goes. Good job by Tennessee's defense and one of their captain seniors Kyle Phillips with the sack. Put him into third and long and I don't know if there's any Offensive line can hold up as Jared Garitano and you know what the speculation about Jared Garitano from that first hit has been right on. We don't know how good he was. You always want to go out there and the Tennessee doctors had to be watching him right. after every series. So that, we know it's going to be Keller Christ once they get this punt back. But Tony set to punt. Coming end over end. One hopper down to the 15. Marquez Callaway drops immediately. Might have got a yard out of that. Nice job on the special teams. The Ross with the tackle. The problem for Callaway there is that Tennessee went for the block and he knew he had no oh. protection back there, but he had a rolling punt, so he had to save it. Took a pretty big shot. Keller Christ at quarterback when we come back. There's a review going on as to whether or not there was a targeting foul on the punt return by Marquez Calloway. And last night when we talked to Barry Odom, we asked him what was targeting. He says, I don't know. Yeah. He said, what do you do if you're a defensive player and the offensive ball carrier ducks his head? What are you supposed to do? And that play, Tevin Ross, number six, was trying to tackle him around the waist, and all of a sudden Calloway lowers as his ball carrier down. I would not call that targeting. I know it was helmet to helmet, but I don't know what the defender's supposed to do. Tavon looking on as Hubert Owens is going to make the call. After review, the ruling is that number six from Missouri committed a targeting foul. Number six is disqualified. 15 yard penalty for the end of the run. First down. Well, there you have it. It is the most scrutinized thing going on in football right now. And when you've got head coaches and players not knowing what to do here, he's trying to tackle his legs. Callaway's a ball carry, he lowers his helmet, and that's why everybody's confused. I mean, right now in college football, everyone, it's like the NFL was a year ago. What's a catch? Right now, everyone is confused as to what is targeting and what's not. So Tavon Ross, the senior out of Cochran, Georgia's day is done. Meanwhile, with a penalty, Tennessee from the 31 on the ground is Ty Chandler, and at quarterback again, if you're just joining us, is Keller Christ, the grad transfer from Stanford, in at quarterback with Jared Garantano, the normal starter in the Tennessee locker room.
Keller's one of the captains today because he is a senior, one of the 13 seniors. Senior day here, he's senior plus, I guess. One of the things that Tyson Helton thought that Jared Garantano needed to do was anticipate his throws more. Keller Chris is a little better of anticipation with his throws. Let's see if he can get it out of his hands faster. Gonna loft it down the sideline, just overshot. His intended receiver, Jawan Jennings, the intended receiver. Yeah, there's no anticipating on the first hit. He can't anticipate, no. had no time at all. And the second sack, he had to just give up on the play, and you can see he never really felt good about himself after that. And I'm sure there was a close eye kept on him. This is the fourth third down situation for Tennessee. They had third and 11, third and 18, third and 11. This is third and seven at least one of their shorter ones and see if they can get it out to the 41 yard line both safeties very aggressive and they both come Chris lofts it again and this time he's got Jennings Jennings still going all the way down inside the 25 so you don't have to be a fifth year Stanford transfer to know there's no safeties in the middle of the field you let the ball go Jennings Right on time. That's almost too easy for a quarterback. Before the ball snapped, you know where that ball's going. They cannot get to you in time. So, Juwan Jennings, big play, 41 yard pickup. And the deepest penetration now for Tennessee at the Mizzou 24. Didn't it seem like a risky call for, for Missouri to do that? They already had pressure on the quarterback. Why do more? Now they come back the other way, and this is Jordan Murphy. We check in with Jamie. Well, it's been confirmed from Tennessee. Jarrett Garantano headed to that locker room being evaluated for that head neck injury. He is doubtful to return. Bad news also for the Volunteers offense. Marquez Callaway after that hit on the kickoff. He's been in the medical tent ever since and he looked uh, limber in that neck area too. Last time we were here against Alabama. Was it on a pass? He was out of the game with a head injury. That's right. So Tennessee's worked it down to the 19. Looks like he's okay though. Second down at five. Chris throws complete down to the six. Josh Palmer. Again, a little bit of good anticipation by a quarterback in and out of his hands. When this guy moves, he knows he throws it right off his shoulder. As soon as you clear. The good quarterbacks hit their receivers at the beginning of the window, not the end of the window. That ball was thrown right off the shoulder of the defender. Good throw. So they didn't even have a first down until this drive, and now they've gone 78 yards in two and a half minutes and first and goal they have at the too six. Many guys out there, and Barry Odom is trying to call timeout. 12 guys for sure. Tennessee will have it first and goal when we return from this timeout. Trailing the zoo, six nothing. Want more stats? Hey Siri, who leads college football in passing yards? Coming out of the timeout, 10 51 remaining in the half, and Tennessee trying to take the lead amazingly with a game that's just been dominated time of possession by Missouri. But this drive has been a good one with Keller Christed quarterback in for yeah. Jarrett Garantano. Well, it was a big gamble on third down by Barry Odom's defense that allowed Keller Christ to just throw a, a lob pass, basically, a, a no brainer. Jeremy Pruitt, after being part of five national championships as a coordinator in his first year as head coach, and he says, These are the things that we're getting better at. Didn't even know how to practice kind of when I got <laughs> yeah, here. Exactly. They are gaining confidence. They're gaining confidence on this drive, I'm sure, that's covered 78 yards. Down just inside the six yard line. Here's the toss. Ty Chandler cuts back. Ty Chandler. Touchdown. His cutback actually beat two Missouri defenders. Missouri, I think you got to play it more inside out, but such a sharp cutback got inside. Watch it. Gets to there. Now watch this cutback. Two defenders to make the play. They both overrun it. Hall and Garrett both overrun the play. Got a late block from Latrell Bumpus. That helped the cause to cap off an 84 yard touchdown drive. Yeah. Missouri's going to kick themselves on that drive. A third down play and a defensive play right there that they had him for no gain, and he gets a touchdown. Brett Samaglia in to try to put Tennessee in front. And 
just like that. The game has turned in favor of the Volunteers. Smokey's loving it. 10.45 remaining in the half. Ty Chandler on the ground. And now, do Project Smarter, presented by the Home Depot. Gary? Well, you can never have too many quarterbacks, and when you get a transfer quarterback that has experience, that's pretty smart, and it comes through in this situation. A guy that could walk on the field that has some experience, you get a team that's not doing very well, having trouble moving the ball, just a guy to go in there and calm things down and take advantage of. You're usually smart when you're a grad transfer from Stanford. That's, that's a good place to go. <laughs> So after nothing but punts and negative yardage, an 84-yard drive in a little under three minutes. Ty Chandler's second rushing touchdown of the year. And there, Tennessee in front. There's always a yin and a yang, though. Right now, as Tennessee's talking about that great drive, the Missouri defense is going, why did we gamble there? And there's going to be second guessing from the players and the coaching staff themselves. They're going to think, well, yeah, that was too much of a risk. And an outside kick. Little pooch job. It's a live ball. I think Tennessee might have gotten there. The coaching staff to our left for the Volunteers think so. Now the ball's still being mulled around there by Missouri, but I thought there was an orange jersey there first. He came out of the pile with the ball. Carlin fills a me, a third string tailback, I thought was the guy. Let's see. Well, Jeremy Pruitt tried an onside kick early in the year. It didn't work. And this one looked like they had it. But at the bottom of the pile, you never know. Watch number 27. He's got the speed to get there, but he might have slid over it. Yeah, overran it, didn't he? Wow. And All those words. And Jeremy Pruitt said, it's the second time I had it set up perfect, and we did not get it. So first down, Missouri from the 34. Silly Bakari, they fake the handoff to him. Lock fires, complete first down throw. Out to Emmanuel Hall again. Well, Emmanuel Hall missed five games. Uh, watch the Georgia tape, and he was actually a decoy in that game. Could not even run full speed. He's their home run threat coming across the field. And Drew Locke waits for him and puts it right on. He caught five balls for over 100 yards and two touchdowns in this game last year. And now Locke, oh, oh man, it had a guy in stride, oh. and Floyd dropped it. That's his second drop. Remember the long throw across the field on the comeback? This time, it's perfect. Just dropped it right in his hands. That's two oh, of them, oh, yes. Man. Yes, I know. You can't do it any better than that. No, can't throw him perfect and catch him perfect as a quarterback. But I'm telling you right now, there's four scouts here from the NFL. An eligible downfield, number 70 on the offense. Yeah, we'll come back anyway. Penalty, first down. Well, right now, this Missouri offense with their RPO offense better take note because this group of officials is calling the linemen downfield on the RPOs. You've had one by each tackle now, yes. right and left. Tennessee with a blitz. Lock fires. Man missed. Now down the sidelines. Cam Scott finally brought down, but he's near the 15 yard line. In the offense that Drew Lock has run the last three years, he's seen a hundred of these corner blitzes. And he's got his eye out to the short side of the field, and he does not get fooled. And with that arm, he just flicks it out there and destroys that corner blitz. 44 yard pickup to the 15. All these quarterbacks know with the near hash, you have to be ready for that guy all the time, and Drew Locke was. Tyler Beatty in the backfield with him. And now it's Locke on the keeper, and Locke got five or six. Gary mentioned that, not afraid to run. It's two parts to it. You have to be aware of it on the snap. The receiver and the quarterback have to be aware, and then let it go. And if you make one guy miss, you have a huge play. Second down, a long four. I actually thought that running play was the one they were going to use down there before on third down and get him into the end zone. Two wideouts to the top of the screen. 
Lott fakes the throw that way and gives the handoff to Beatty, and Beatty's got it first and goal. I thought he was going to be stopped short of the first down, but he takes it inside the five to the four. Beatty injured his ankle against in the Florida game, but he looks healthy now and back and being one of the three ball carriers. And this, as we showed you earlier, between Roundtree, Crockett, and Beatty. Didn't play in that game last week against Vanderbilt with that bad foot, but that run's got him first and goal at the four. He stays in there with Locke. Extra lineman, two tight ends. And it's Beatty straight up the middle. Beatty, touchdown, Missouri. Tyler Beatty puts Mizzou back in front. Yeah, and this offensive line that time got the push necessary. Three defensive linemen up there, but just enough space for Beatty to get to the next level and then just powers it in. A drive and mostly, remember, there was a drop pass for a touchdown in the middle of this drive, right. too, and still finished off by this Missouri offense. Tucker McCann in for the point after. For Tony to hold, and the kick is up and good. So just when Tennessee had taken its first lead, Missouri goes 66 yards in five plays. They regain it with Tyler Beatty's second rushing touchdown of the year. 13-7 Tigers. We'll be there, Zuck. Iron Bowl next week in Tuscaloosa. Take a look at our Chick-fil-A pilot cam before the game. Smokey was checking it out. Smokey's a six-year senior. Um, <laughs> I think he got a medical red shirt. You know what his favorite food is? He loves Brewster's ice cream and Chick-fil-A. So and when he goes on the road, you know, they go out and get get him Chick-fil-A. So do I. <laughs> we're, having it, we're having it on the ice freezer when we get done. <laughs> This kick's going to go. Did it go out of bounds? It did. Bring it out to the 35. Just got to the corner and went out at the one. Well, Jeremy Pruitt's onside kick to not come through for him, but I thought it was a good gamble. It was set up perfectly. As Brad showed you, Phil Zemi had a chance to grab it, overran it, and uh, gave good field position to Missouri, but Free I thought a good try. Number 19 of the kicking team. Tennessee There's the coach the over on the sideline. He has got everybody's nine. attention. Let's test your knowledge with today's athletic trivia question. Well, we've got a moment here. And it is which SEC head coaches are currently coaching at their alma maters? Well, we probably gave you a little bit of hint by where we are, but or who we have here. Yeah, we should be able to get one of them. Yeah, right. If you don't get one, we're just <laughs> asking the question wrong. Hey. First down at the 35. Keller Christ with. Tim Jordan in the backfield with him. Fakes it to Jordan, loads it, and goes deep. Man out there, and it is caught by Marquez Callaway. That one hung in the air a while, but Callaway camped under it like a center fielder. Remember when I told you four of the first plays against Kentucky were deep balls? You can another first down play of a drive going deep, and that 50 50 ball, Tennessee has been making all year. Go back to the Auburn tape. They made about six of them. And that deep ball right there, Callaway adjusted beautifully. Chris, four out of five for over 100 yards. That was a pickup of 49. He's looking for more and going to the corner. Incomplete intended for Tim Jordan. Good coverage by Therese Hall, the outside linebacker. Part of the game plan. Foul. Rushing the passer. Defense number 99. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Walter Palmore roughing the passer. I was going to say part of the game plan was attacking number 24, Hall, who did a good job on the play. I did not see, I was at my eyes downfield, what Palmer, Palmore did on the play. Did not see the hit on the quarterback at all. It's a first and goal at any rate with the penalty. So Tennessee takes it right down the field again. And they're knocking on the Tiger door. Callaway and Murphy. The wide outs, and it's a quarterback draw. Keller Chris down to the two. 
Tyree Gillespie made the shot and the stop. One look right here. Here's the previous play they hit on the quarterback. Let's it go and a hit a blow to the upper chest and neck area. That's a good call. Take him low. Got to go in and tackle him around the midsection. You put those hands up to the face, you're going to get called for it. Eli Wolf in a fullback spot in an eye with Chandler behind him. Second down and goal. The gives to Chandler behind Wolf. Didn't get anything. Nice job by the Missouri defense. He might have lost a foot. Jordan Elliott led the charge, and it's third and goal. Jeremy Pruitt's been very aggressive all year. Does he think he has two downs? Has he told his offensive coordinator, Tyson Helton, you got two here, or has he got just one? I would like to know that if I was calling the plays. They haven't called Dominic Wood Anderson's number today yet, one of the tight ends, and they've got about three of them in there. Chris, play fake, rolls. Not going to get there. Nope, lost two or three. Nice job. Good coverage, apparently. That's going to be a coverage tackle of loss of three. Yeah. Keller Christ, you know, has had a serious knee injury. We had him in the Sun Bowl where he actually hurt his knee. And you can see Roundtree make up a lot of space. And with the loss of yardage there, this is a good call. Now, I think if he would have gained a yard, might have been a serious question whether you go for it. But now you got to take the try for three. So Maglia is 9 of 12 on the year. 21 yard field goal attempts. Basically a little bit longer than an extra point, but it is from the right hash. And he tucks it in the left upright. So Tennessee answers Missouri's score with one of their own 13 10 Tigers. Welcome back inside Milan Stadium as we make our way to halftime. That will be the time we find out more from Tennessee on quarterback Jared Garantano. He remains in the locker room once again, doubtful to return with that head neck injury he suffered early on in the game, but that offense in good hands with Keller Christ. Sure is, Jamie. He's led them to two scores now, a touchdown and a field goal. And part of the plan was to go deep against Missouri, and it is working. Missouri will start at the 25. With 536 remaining, and they have two of their timeouts remaining. Earlier, we asked you to test your knowledge with the Aflac trivia question, which was, which SEC head coaches are currently coaching at their alma maters? Before I can even repeat it, they already put the names up there for you. There's Matt at Ole Miss. Barry wearing that cast on his broken thumb, he told us last night, and then Kirby Smart from Georgia. An opportunity here for Coach Odom's Tigers to get more points before the break. They've got 180 total yards so far. Little indecision there on the option and the pitch. Yeah, that is not what they wanted. On first down, another play. So far, they've had six first down plays, and four of them have been for zero or minus yards. Against South Carolina, this Tennessee defense was ripped. 21 times South Carolina gained positive yards on first down. Lock has plenty of time across the middle and a route by Jonathan Johnston that gets close to a first down. Well, they go hurry up now. These third and shorts, modern. They love to get up there and go fast on these. Yep. A five minute mark, third and one. And Beatty's got it. They'll move the sticks with 454 remaining in the half. Derek Kirkland made the tackle. You gotta wonder if Crockett is a nicked here. Okay, he's had such success against Tennessee, big beating this week, last week. Wonder where Crockett is. This throw, easy pitch and catch out to Johnson again. That's another first down. Ness, remember yesterday we were talking to Derek Dooley, offensive coordinator. He was going to mention something to us. He goes, well, uh, I better not say it. You'll notice once the game starts. I think it's Crockett, right? I think so, too. He's only been in there for a couple snaps. Yes. Rontree started the game. Beatty has taken over. Rontree is back in there right now. Number 34. As good of friends as we are with him, he would not tell us. How about that? <laughs> From midfield, here is Roundtree for nine. 
And Mizzou's got something working here offensively. Even without uh, Crockett, the Roundtree, who's in the last two games, is 35 carries for 164 with almost a five-yard average. Here he comes again. A time he ran into a wall, but he got the first down, I think. Pretty close. Depends on the spot here. The old Madden spot. Right foot, left foot, right? <laughs> it's the right foot. You and got it. He's got the first down. <laughs> There's Demarie on the sideline. He had a 122 yards. A couple of years ago, he had 225 in this game. Sure did. First and ten at the 40. It's the tight end Parker in motion as Locke's going to fire deep. Man there. Got. Oh! Dropped it. Holy cow. Emmanuel Hall, he hit him right in the hands again. That's two deep balls. One dropped by Hall and one by Floyd. You know, this uh, Tennessee defense has seen some quarterbacks this year. They started out with Will Greer. They've seen Tua, Jake Fromm, but no one has thrown the ball as well as that against them. And they're fortunate because that's two <laughs> touchdown drops. And Drew Locke is going, oh, oh boy. my. You know what? The scouts watch that and go, I don't care. Our guys will catch it. <laughs> exactly. So all it is is second and ten. Locke back to work. Quick throw. Snaps it out there. First down, Ron Tree. And he's down around the 22. How about a heads up play by Roundtree? He knows he's open and he starts clapping almost like basketball. Like, hey, here I am, here I am. He claps and Locke gives it to him because Locke was a basketball player. He zipped that thing for 18 yards back to the ground to Roundtree and he gets inside the 20 as we're down to three minutes. Will Ignat in on the stop. You know, without their receiving tight end, Akue Bunam, number 81, who is such a weapon. That's one of the guys off the field. And without him, it's a little different in the red zone. They've been stopped twice without him. They miss him. And again, funny looking play on the option. Looks like block. Ooh, big hit on the sideline. And one of our chain gang crew took a shot over there as well. Same option against Florida went for a touchdown. So just enough. Just keep the defense honest with the threat of the quarterback running. They're down at two. And on the inside, a tough run by Crockett, who's in there. Yes, he was. And he's got the first. Down to the 11. Crockett, 225 pound junior out of Little Rock, Arkansas. No hurry now for Missouri. Getting close to two minutes. Remember, Tennessee gets the ball to start the second half. The best way to do it here would be to score right and not leave a lot of time on the clock. Yep. So from hurry up to let's slow down at the 11 yard line. They can get a first down at the one. Lock might want it right here, though. Now he'll keep it. And he gets about three Whoa. before he's run out of bounds. A late shove there, and he went way out of bounds on the play. I wouldn't want to be working on the sideline right yeah. now. Jamie, be careful, will you? Yeah, one sideline to the right, now one sideline to the left. Yep, Taylor shoved him just as he was still in bounds. Good no call. And I was always told, Ted Mochabrota, my quarterback coach in the Lions, used to always tell me, sprint out of bounds. Do not slow down. Was that Skip that just took one Was it there? really? Camera guy? I, camera guy? I, I did I, not I, see I, it. I think he took one for the team so over you, there. So you said, well, look out, Jamie, and Skip yeah, got it. Yeah, Skip got it instead. Second and seven, pump fake. And now the throw is complete, and it is a touchdown. Jacinto on the score. I'll tell you, as impressive as those two deep balls were, this throw is more impressive. It's clear across the field, and watch right on target. Watch this throw to the outside. Perfectly wow. led. An unteachable skill to have that kind of accuracy and arm strength, and the pylon cam captured the end of it. The freshman, Dominic Jacinto, came right through the pylon on that touchdown throw. By Locke that capped a 75 yard drive in a hurry. 
That's quieted the crowd here with the extra point upcoming. Getting a review to make sure he did not step out of bounds. And he did not. I think his hand had already crossed the yes. pylon by the so time maybe his left. It's good foot to look though, right? He's got it there, and then the foot hits. Did his left foot touch before he touched the pylon? That's the close. You got to decide. We can't tell on this one. But I think he touched before. I do too. But, and they had looked at it, and indeed it's a touchdown. And the extra point is blocked. It's a live ball. Tennessee picks it up at the one. They're not going to get anything out of it, but they did prevent any further damage. Well, they've been having trouble with the snaps, but they've been getting them through. McCann, a couple of field goals. Big point. That one, a big point for later. I think it was Kyle Phillips that blocked the extra points. And this was a couple of plays earlier in that drive. And our guy, Skip, that, that's what happens to the camera when your guy goes down. Skip, you, you took one for the team. He did. You okay, Skip? He's, he's a workout maniac, yes, he though, is. so he can take those kind of shots. He's back on the treadmill. No yeah. big deal. <laughs> uh, return Bryce Thompson. Thompson weaving through traffic. Bryce Thompson, nice return for Tennessee out to the 37-yard line. Another one of those true freshmen we've been talking about. Plays in the secondary. Some of the future. Bryce, a freshman out of Irmo, South Carolina. Gives Tennessee good field position. 35-yard kickoff return. So let's see if Keller Christian Company with a full complement of timeouts and 90 seconds to work can get Tennessee some more points before the break. All three timeouts left. Situation last week in a similar situation. They ended up scoring with the Hell Mary at the end of the half. Here's a big opening for Ty Chandler. Chandler down to the 30 yard line. Two chunk plays, a kickoff return, and then this 33 yard run. Yeah, well, that time Tez Hall, number 24, just went the wrong way. Don't even know what he was looking at. He was getting blocked inside out, and he tried to go back to his right and opened up a hole that was already there even wider. So now, still plenty of time, and already at the 30 yard line of Missouri. Yeah, Mr. Chandler again, only a couple this time. Palmore and company on the stop. We work our way down close to a minute. Remaining second quarter. Tennessee goes without a huddle, obviously hurrying things up here at the one minute mark. Chris, plenty of time, fires, had him in, and it was Dominic Wood Anderson, his tight end, but he couldn't hold it. Would have been a good catch. But it would have really helped out the team. I mean, I've seen catches like that all over this conference, and this would have been a big one by Wood Anderson. Could have had it, but would have been a good catch. And that's third down and long. They need to get to the 20 for a first down. Boy, the two dependable ones, Callaway and Jennings, are to the left in the slot and the wide receiver. stop play might have been Jameer Johnson the left guard I think we got a false start before the snap timeout Missouri yeah they got the timeout before the penalty we'll take the timeout as well Gary mentioned this a couple of minutes ago against Kentucky last week last play of the half Garantano loads and fires finds Marquez Callaway on a Hail Mary to end the half and get Tennessee their lead, and they went on to win 24 to 7. Yeah, that game was 3 to nothing. You look at offensive coordinator Tyson Helton right there with 2.30 to go, 10 nothing with two minutes to go, and 17 nothing at the buzzer at the halftime buzzer. Crisp fires by the side, intercepted. Picked off by DeMarcus AC going the other way. AC's got the quarterback to beat. And Crisp will get him out of bounds at the 10 yard line. Well, there was a miscommunication on that one. 
Chris was throwing almost a back shoulder. And Callaway was going deep on the ball. AC just turned around and said, all right, I'll catch it. Watch the top of the screen right here. Keller Chris throws to the left. Callaway keeps going. And AC, who was, by the way, the guy who had the pass interference call, the tough call against the Kentucky game from Missouri, comes back and gets a big pick here at the end of the half to put maybe to turn the tables on what Tennessee did to Kentucky last week. Missouri might be able to do this to Tennessee this week. Well, they've got 44 seconds to work and one time out, and they're already at the 11-yard line after a 76-yard interception return by AC. Timeout must not mean might not mean much because they're going to be all passes here, probably into the end zone. Lock four wideouts. Flushed out of the pocket, got a man open to the flat though. To the 10, to the nine is Demarie Crockett. Should use it right now. Well, they're going to go fast. They're going to try to save it. They're at the nine. And they give it to Crockett again, straight up the middle. He got to the seven. Uh, no, he got inside the five to yep. the three. And you know why they saved it? Because they were going to run the ball. So they knew they had a run called, so they saved it and ran it. Good job. Coming up in about 19 seconds of our game clock time is the Geico halftime report. Adam, Rick, and BJ will have scores and highlights from other games. So look back at this first half, which is down to 19 seconds. Out of it's a little surprised by the strategy from Missouri. They tried to catch him on a run on second down. But as hot as Drew Locke has been in the first half, his accuracy, I would have thrown three times. Now, Locke can still save it here. He's got one throw to the end zone. But if they don't make it, I guess they could get a first down. But if they don't make it, they got to take the field goal. Three wide outs and Blanton, the tight end in the slot. Beatty's with Locke in the backfield on third down and three. They can get a first down inside the two. Locke scans, throws, touchdown. Jonathan Johnson. So Missouri does to Tennessee what Tennessee did to Kentucky last week. Two touchdowns to end the half to break open a game. Kentucky could never catch up how calm Drew Locke is and why I'd have trouble taking the ball out of his hands. He's that good. You see the crossing route by Jonathan Johnston. He looks at so much more control this year than he did a year ago. Derek Dooley's done a great job with him. Extra point is up by McCann and good. The 15 second mark. Locke with a touchdown pass after the long interception return. So there's 15 seconds remaining in the quarter. DeMarcus AC thwarting a scoring drive by Tennessee with the interception return down to the 11. And it didn't take Drew Lott too much time to get it to Johnson for the touchdown. And now the squib kick covered around the 24. There's a flag down. Yeah, offsides on the kickoff by Missouri on that play. Look at on the last play, the touchdown play. Missouri's very fortunate. They had 12 guys out there, but the coaches from Missouri called their 12th guy out just in time. Before he got inside those numbers, they could have been called for too many men on the field. Instead, it's a touchdown pass just outside three yards on that second scoring toss of the day by Drew Locke. Was an offside penalty on the kick. So Luck up to 94 career touchdown passes now in his brilliant career at Missouri. And that puts him right there. Danny Werfel and Aaron Murray, our colleague at CBS, who's working a game tonight. He is number one with 121. And Drew is, let's see, 183 is about four yards shy of passing David Green. Also of Georgia on the number two pass yardage list. So his next throw will put him in that number two spot. Also behind Aaron Murray. <laughs> McCann, let's see if he just tries to line drive another one. He's actually going to kick away here, and it's a good one because Tennessee can't handle it. 
But they will have 14 seconds left from the 25 yard line. Let's see if Tennessee will just take a knee and head to the locker room and regroup a little bit. Or you think you got things going, you run the kickoff back, you break a big play, and all of a sudden you're in a scoring position and the field flops with miscommunication. And that's why, you know, the backup quarterback does not get as many reps with the first team as the other ones, and that was just a flat out miscommunication between them. Yep, they had a 35 yard kickoff return, a 33 run, 33 yard run by Chandler. Looked like they were going to move into scoring position. Instead, it's a touchdown the other way. They will get the ball to start the second half, but they will be trailing by 16 when that happens. Yeah, 13 points with under two minutes to go, scored by Missouri there. Let's check in with Jamie. Coach, what have you been told about Jarek Garantano's status the rest of this game? Well, he's out for the game. All right, good to know. Uh, the last two minutes, what did you see in terms of negative plays and how you can change that in the second half? Well, you know, we're, we're down, I think, 16 points. Had a chance to get some points there at the end of the half. Throw a costly uh, interception. They run it all the way back. Don't hold them. Um, and then come up with a field goal there early in the half. So uh, we're in the game. We just got to execute and play better on both sides of the ball. Coach, thank you. Yep. That was at least a 10-point swing right there. Right. Who knows, maybe more. But that's the way the first half comes to a close. It is 26 to 10. Missouri on the road with the lead over the Volunteers as we head to our New York studios at Adam Zucker. Zuck. All right, Ness, thank you. And come quarter as the sun sets in Knoxville. And Tennessee hoping they can come from a couple of scores back to even things off with the Tigers of Missouri. They'll have the football first to start the third quarter. On the return, Bryce Thompson had a good one earlier. He's got another good one here. Thompson out across the 40 to the 41 yard line. That's where Tennessee's going to, at Madre London. Tennessee will go to work there. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Jamie's down on the field. In a matter of however long it takes to go 76 yards with right. an interception, the only turnover we had, and then Drew Locke at the controls. In a minute, it, the whole game changed late it's in the funny, second quarter. Both coaches were talking that rushing was going to be the difference. Well, it wasn't. Neither team could run very well. Drew Locke was the difference. His last two halves, 11 for 13 and 14 for 20. So in the last game, half of Vandy, first half here, 25 for 33 for 340 yards. He's on fire. Keller Chris trying to light it up here, and he got it to Marquez Callaway. What a way to open the third quarter. Deep ball on first down. It worked against Auburn. It worked against, again here, AC number two is in perfect phase. Goes up and defends it, and Callaway says no way. And in one play, 49 yards, and it's first and goal. It's funny. You talk to all of the coaches, all of the players, it's whoever wins the running game. It's been all passing <laughs> in this game. So Marquez with a couple of big catches. We talked about 50-50 balls. He's won the two that he's gone 50-50 on, I'll tell you that much. The swing out to Jordan Murphy. Murphy down to the three. Second down and goal. So the Missouri defense caught on their heels a little bit by that deep ball. Well, AC was right there. I mean, I don't know if you could defend it any better. Callaway just made the play. AC looked up and he goes, uh, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> so he trots out to the left side. Eli Wolf, the tight end at the fullback spot as the toss is to Jordan. Might have gotten a yard, maybe. To Marcus AZ, who had the interception. Remember at the end of the first half, here he is, manned up. He's in perfect phase, turns on. He says, I got him. I'm right there. Go up, knock it down. No. Callaway grabs it. Last time Tennessee was down in this spot, they had a little bit of a bootleg as they were trying to get it to Dominic Wood Anderson. He's over there, number four on the right side. Three wide outs to the left of Keller Christ. Chris looks that way, comes back in the flat. Tip ball, incomplete. It was intended for Chandler, and there's a flag down. I think it hit Terez Hall right in the helmet. He did such a great job. Watch him fight through the traffic to get to this player. 
fights through the traffic, gets there. Now, did he get a hand on the receiver? They're going to call Pass it. Pass interference. Defense. Number 24. The ball will be placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. Therese Hall almost overran the play. He got there so fast. Check play. Check play pylon cam. Here's another look, and there it is. Yep. The shove. Yep. Put his left hand in the back, and if he was in phase, he didn't trust it. Tough job. He almost pulled it off. First and goal from the two, and heading to the end zone. Ty Chandler, touchdown, Tennessee. Looks like Tennessee is going to go for two. That is cut that 16 down to eight if they can get it. This is just about a walk in for Chandler. The only thing about this, you're going for two early like this. You know, you take a game that 17 points, two touchdowns, and a field goal wins it. It changes the numbers drastically. They substitute late. Now they bring in Josh Palmer back out there, number 84. He was heading to the sideline. They would have been a man short. Meanwhile, Missouri has an opportunity to get an extra player out there and change things up. And now there's flags. Yeah, it's going to be the legs. All those Left substitutions. Game. Offense. Five yard penalty. We'll have to try. And now do you still go for two? I'd be surprised, I have to say. I'd go for the extra point. And that's going to be the call. There's so much football left that I'd take the one. That's what anyway. I say. That's what I think. So the beast. Brent Samaglia. Out of a Joe Doyle hold for the extra point. And it's up and good. So see a touchdown on the field goal now wins you the football game. So just a couple of minutes into the third quarter. The big play, Keller Christ. 49 yards to his main man, number one, Marquez Callaway. And then Ty Chandler. From two yards out, his second rushing touchdown of the year. 26-17. Let's take a look at the GMC game changer here. Well, your offense works together when everybody's on the same page. And then these RPOs, you read the linebacker, get him going the wrong way, you hit the receiver. Same thing here. This time the blitz picked up by the center. Colon Castillo, good job. And then the corner blitz, you keep your eyes to that short side of the field. When everybody knows what to do, you can make people pay when they blitz you. Especially when you got a guy like you Drew Locke it. pulling the trigger. It gets to the point with some of these quarterbacks where you're begging them to blitz because you know it's man to man and you get those big plays. Baxton Brooks to kick. Rashad Floyd is back at the goal line for Missouri. He's got a shot at this one if he chooses and he will bring it from a yard deep. And Floyd's got something working as he crossed the 25 out to the 26 and we check in with Jamie. That momentum at the end of the first half for Missouri put a smile on Barry Odom's face but you know what wiped it away finding out that running back to Maria Crockett is doubtful to return with a right ankle injury in this game defensively sensing that Keller Chris would remain at the quarterback position he knew more vertical plays were coming he said we're going to show a lot of different looks in the secondary he didn't even have a chance during that series the first thing he did went over to that secondary meeting during this uh, last touchdown. First thing after he talked to you, he saw a 49 yard pass down to Marquez exactly. Galloway. And that's Drew Locke and company back to work. Missouri scored a touchdown on their last three possessions. And it's Locke on the keeper. Drew Locke looking for blockers and slides after a first down run. Zone read be a willing ball carrier just get us out of a bad play we got kyle phillips taking the running back just get it five six whoa four 16 four yards. you yeah. got it now the throw that could have been dangerous tennessee had a man trying to play for the interception it's incomplete floyd was the intended receiver well, i'm wondering if jonathan johnson didn't get a block on that play 
whether that ball might have been picked off. Bryce Thompson was closing in on that ball, and I think number 12, Jonathan Johnson, helped out from keeping that from being an interception. And Bryce is a guy that's down right there. I do think the block helped. I think it would have been picked off had that Johnson not got the block. Look at that. I think that could have been a pick six without the block. We're going to check out Bryce Thompson, who is trotting off on his own. And we come back. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Exxon Mobil. Control GX. The Home Depot. And by Chick fil A. Back at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, our aerial coverage sponsored by State Farm here to help life go right. On the banks of the Tennessee, Neyland Stadium, Thompson Bowling Arena over there to the left. And on the field, Missouri with a 26 17 lead and second down and 10. Their own 42. Lock, quick throw might be, I thought it was going to be a double pass. I guess it was a forward pass. Got it on Cam Scott on the completion. Our game trend so far. A couple of touchdown passes by Drew Locke. Tennessee's offense struggled with Garantano, but Christ has helped the cause. And Missouri six game scoring 20 plus in the half this season, sixth time. Crowd trying to come to life for the Tennessee defense. Big third down and six here. Tyler Beatty in the backfield with Locke who looks left comes back to the right to Beatty who broke a tackle and another Tyler Beatty still going. They just can't get number one down. I thought Daryl Taylor was going to get into Drew Locke's throwing motion but Locke I think side arms around him quickly gets that release and then two busted tackles could have been a stop. Good job by Drew Locke to get rid of the football and then Beatty finished the play. We got a Tennessee player down on the far side. That's why the whistle and the stoppage in play. That's the first time I've seen Daryl Taylor really come off the ball and put pressure on Drew Locke. And Drew Locke with that quick release just got rid of it uh, too fast. Will Ignat's left shoulder is what he's favoring there. That was a 21 yard pickup on third down and six. And now Drew Locke, I mentioned this earlier, has passed David Green of Georgia into the number two spot all time in career passing yards. He won't catch Aaron Murray. Maybe nobody ever will. I don't know. But those are impressive numbers including his 93rd and 94th touchdown pass so far in this game. Because of the arm strength of Drew Locke you can put your receivers really wide. Look how wide Hall is at the bottom of the screen. They keep it on the ground. Ground tree. And a good game. Got about six. Nigel Warrior brought him down. You know this offensive line from Missouri all five veteran players returned they knew it was going to be a strength of their football team they've run the ball against everybody but two teams really they didn't do it against Alabama and Kentucky but everybody else they've been able to run it today not that much 106 though and here's a throw and a beauty again from Locke to Hall. And Hall's out at about the one, I think. It's almost not fair. When you can throw the ball like this, Hall and he are on the same page. That security blanket that he has, knowing that Hall is going to be there, missing him for five games, I think cost at least Missouri one football game. Got it to the two. And the handoff, close round three. Did he get there? Yes, he did. Touchdown. I don't know. Did he bounce over? I know it was called touchdown on the field, but did he bounce across the line or did he get there? That's pretty close, isn't it? Sure is. Another look, another angle. I think Darren Kirkland had his hand on the ball, and I'm not sure it got across the line. I don't know if there's enough to overturn it there. You just have to pierce the front edge of that line. It was called a touchdown, right? Yeah, it's going to be the tough. There's nothing right there, there to overturn it, I don't think. So it's a two yard touchdown. And if it would have been called short, I don't think it would have been overturned either. <laughs> right. Tucker McCann for the point after. Kick is up and good. 
Touchdowns in four consecutive drives. The last one, Larry Roundtree on the ground for the 10th time this year, and it's 33-17. Thirty-three seventeen. now, Drew Locke engineering another long scoring drive, 74 yards. Watch this throw. I know, putting a show on here. This ball never, I think, goes more than eight feet in the air and zips right off the ear of the defender, Taylor. Taylor goes, boy, this didn't happen to me in high school. <laughs> Holy cow, the wow. shadow of the ball right, right through the T on the helmet. Most people can't do this, folks. Now, I, I literally have not seen anybody with this type of a ball placement and arm talent since Matt Stafford. Now, I don't know where he's going to go in the draft. That's a whole number thing, but if it's not in the first round, I haven't seen one. Though. No, I, I'm putting on a show. I'll have to say that here today. And to bring it out to the 25. Home Depot SEC on CBS features some great Thanksgiving weekend football for you. Friday, Arkansas takes on this same Missouri team. And then next Saturday, it's the 83rd Iron Bowl. Auburn takes on number one Alabama. Gary, Jamie, and myself and the crew will be there. Hope you have a big Thanksgiving plans and make sure that those two football games are part of it. <laughs> I was just thinking. Don't you think the Giants are going, oh, wait a second, That's our. that was our really our plan. We were going to take Sparkly last year and lock this. Year. See, we knew all along this was going to be our plan. Exactly. <laughs> so Tennessee now trailing again by 16, going back to work with Keller Christ. He fires near side. That's incomplete intended for Callaway. Interesting, we talked to Drew Locke earlier this year, and because he's a Missouri guy all the way, there wasn't really any doubt where he was going to go to school out of Lee Summit, Missouri. I said, are you a Chiefs fan? And he said, I used to be, but Mahomes is there now, and he's going to—he's taking the job I wanted. Exactly. <laughs> he said, I, I really wanted the Chiefs to just be bad one more year. <laughs> Wrist out second down and 10. Blitz coming. And it pays off a collar job by Terry Beckner. And a loss on the play. Wow. Inside, we talked about those two defensive tackles, Palmore and Becker. And this time. Yeah, fans wanted a face mask, and maybe there should have been. Was it in the collar? I don't know if it was a face mask. And by the way, if it was a collar, he was in front of the player to start. Yeah. I do not think that's a horse collar. He started in front, and her arm went as he turned the player. I think that's a good no call. Terry Beckner, one of the captains, overcome a couple of ACL tears to come back for his senior season. This one sails out of bounds. Oh, Hilton tried right to pull up, end. and he hit Marquez Calloway, and that's. I, I actually thought it was called before the hit. I thought it was called the number eight, Jarvis, Jarvis Ware, but I, you could pick it. I don't know if Ware was holding him or was it on Hilton at the end? You could pick it. Let's see if there's holding first. Well, that's pretty much holding. See, he's holding. I think that's the flag. Pass interference. Defense. Yes. Number eight. Yeah, I thought that's what it was. 15, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Now, lucky there wasn't two flags, both on Missouri. Marquez Callaway is still down. Hilton was pulling off, but he gave it that one little like, eh, it's still football. I'm going to nudge you just to let you know. <laughs> yeah, and, that's a pretty good nudge. And, and believe me, sticking your hands up in the air, as Mississippi State will attest, does not get you away from No, ball, that's right? for sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. That could have been called. There could have been 15 more right there. It was an unnecessary play, but he got away with it. It'll be a first down by penalty, fourth one today. Hopefully Marquez is okay because he's their big play guy and he's made a couple big ones already today. Somewhat ironic that the drop balls have been on Missouri today and not on Tennessee because Jared Garitano has had more drops in SEC play. 25% of his incompletions coming into this game were drops. He was last or first, however you want to put it, in the SEC of incompletions percentage that were drops by his receivers. I haven't seen one today so far. Marquez, a junior out of Warner Robins, Georgia. Again, here's that nudge Gary talked about. Yep. <laughs> right under the chin was the nudge. Yep. Jarvis Square number eight was called for interference, but Hilton got a free one. 
So with the penalty, it moves it out to the 38 yard line. First down. Tim Jordan behind Keller Christ, who's under center. So scoops it and scores it. Was it Nate Anderson that caused the fumble on the play? I think it was right here that gets the play. Watch him across. Yes, it was. Anderson gets the play out and Bledsoe picks it up for another score. And a 39 yard fumble return as our pylon cam. You go right by him. And Missouri adds to its lead. Commanding lead now with the extra points up and good. It is 40 to 17. Haven't had a lot of turnover problems. That's a problem. So was the interception earlier by Missouri that turned into points. This one makes it 40 to 17, Tigers. Forty to seventeen, Missouri after that fumble return for the touchdown. Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans brings you today's scholar athlete Brandon Lee for Missouri, looking toward his MBA and Brent Samaglia of Tennessee. Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans showing their commitment to the investment of our future by donating a thousand dollars to Missouri and Tennessee's general scholarship fund. Well, the defensive line for Missouri made the difference there. Becker got the big tackle for a loss and then a backup Nate Anderson as they rolled in their backups and they make a play and another touchdown for that defense. You could actually give them 14 points in this game this defense. Yeah exactly. This week Colbert's new with Michael Douglas Connie Britton and Senator Ben Sass. Plus Monday catch Millie Bobby Brown and Paul Simon all new Colbert come up Monday. So Tennessee is in a hole here. Missouri looking for its eighth straight win in the month of November. The last time they lost in November was two years ago here in Knoxville in that game we talked about where there was 100 points scored. Yeah. I don't know if we're going to get to 1,300 yards, but we may get a little more scores <laughs> here. Probably not in the 60s, though. I guess. Two yard gain for Ty Chandler. News and notes from Iran College football, a rescheduled game due to the California wildfires, and we wish everybody out there the best, man. That's been terrible. Les Miles is finalizing a contract to become the head coach at Kansas. He will go back to the Big 12 where he was at Oklahoma State before LSU. And Josh Pascal, who's been battling cancer and started for the first time this season. That's awesome news. What do you think about Les going to Kansas? Gary? Well, he's got some experience, as you said. But, you know, Les is a good recruiter. I, I'll say that when he gets into your house, he can recruit football players, and uh, it's a job that you plenty of upside. I can say that. <laughs> it's been done before, though. Well, Mark Mangino did a good job. That's right. When he was there. I think what Les will be passing considerably more when he goes there than he probably had at LSU. Yeah, remember Glenn Mason did a good job there as well. Yeah. So we've seen people win there. Bill Self's doing a pretty good job winning there. Yes. <laughs> Pretty much. Third down at eight. Chris, good throw and catch. Got it out to Josh Palmer for the first uh, first down. Missouri drops into zone, forces Chris to make the long throw. He does. It's not as pretty, not a dart to the outside, but effective enough. You know, it's funny. You watch him throw some good passes here, and then you just look at the other side and you go, "Okay, he's got a pretty good arm, but the other guy's got a better arm." Yeah, no offense, Keller. Exactly. Here comes a run blitz. Nice cutback by Chandler. And he goes for eight more. Kale Garrett, another tackle, the middle linebacker. A little surprise that Tennessee and Tyson Hilton has not found a way to get Ty Chandler the ball in the passing game. He's a great receiver out of the backfield. They were going to try to 
isolate Therese Hall, number 24, their outside linebacker. To the, he plays short field all the time. You can get him matched up almost any time you want. They have not been able to do it. Came in with 19 catches, three of them for touchdowns, and now drop ball again. This time it was on the play. tied uh, Tim Jordan. Remember, as a backup quarterback, you just do not get the reps. These exchanges with the running backs. Well, I don't. I don't think that Jordan thought he was going to get the ball. No. I think he felt that Chris was going to pull it and throw an RPO, and he didn't think he had it. They're still talking about it. Yes, they are. Third down and four. Trips up to the left of Chris. He looks that way, goes that way, is tipped in the air, and incomplete. Jordan Elliott, I think, is the guy got a hand in the way or maybe a helmet in the way. You know, we were talking to Barry Odom yesterday as he came and about the SEC, and he actually hit him right in the head on that one. He didn't even get it with his hands. And he said, you know what's changed? When I came into this league, I determined right away, this is a line of scrimmage league. And if we have an extra scholarship to give, we don't give it to a wide receiver or running back. We give it to an offense or defensive lineman. We had to build our offense and defensive line. Hunt, their catch taken inside the 10 around the 8 by Rashad Floyd. Again, as we take a look at the Dr. Pepper SEC East standings to kind of update you from earlier, Georgia right now is winning in their game. They've already won the division. They'll play Alabama for the SEC title. Florida a winner today over Idaho. You see Kentucky and the important thing for Tennessee, it doesn't look like they're going to be able to win this game, although we still got a lot of football left. But they go to Vandy next week and they would still need a win there to be bowl eligible and that would be for a program that you know 20 years ago we'd say big deal bowl eligible but right now when you're trying to rebuild it would mean a lot to this program if they could get another win and get an opportunity to play some extra football. Nice run one of the better ones by Larry Roundtree today. In that offensive line giving just enough room watch him squeeze through there now good blocking all along the line got a kick out of the story after the Alabama game their offensive line coach Brad Davis he was not happy with their play so you know what he did he didn't talk to his offensive line all week he just gave the silent treatment I do and, that at home all the time well I get I'll tell you what it happens to me and it's very effective to tell you the truth first down at the 28 lock play action loads going deep got a man out there and in and out of the hands of Cam Scott Man, they're going to get rough in the pass or two, I think, at the end of it. Personal foul, rough in the passer. Defense, number 19, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So Darryl Taylor been trying to get a sack today, and he can't quite get there. Well, he was. Oh, yeah, he got his hands up. Very similar to the hit, you know, that Garantano took early in the game, but that one was Garantano ducking. This one, as the quarterback was throwing the ball, you got to stay away from the head. Gary mentioned. Taylor had four sacks last week in the win over Kentucky, which tied some great players that played here before him, including Reggie White and Corey Miller. And he had three sacks earlier this season against Georgia. So all his sacks have come in two games. Right. And he's played the National Defensive Player of the Week for that performance, but uh, there he got the penalty. Here's Roundtree again. Tough runner. Let's check in with Jamie on the sideline. Well, that ball we just saw from Drew Locke is a, lo a big reason why people thought he could have departed for the NFL after last season. He had a third option, though. Graduate and transfer to a successful program to win, win, win. I asked him if he ever thought about that. He cut me off before I ended the question. He said, absolutely not. I am Missouri, Missouri guy through and through. He said that would have been a cowardly thing to do if I had left Missouri. How about that? Yeah, that's great. That's a good answer. I, I think this Missouri team thought they had a chance to win the East, to tell you the truth they thought they had a chance and I think without a couple of injuries they would have been a little more dangerous remember the coaches we talked to both Kirby and Nick Saban raved about they Missouri. did they did we respect their opinions after they played those guys but keep in mind they lost Kentucky by not having a touchdown and then having a penalty call to give Kentucky one more play and they lost to South Carolina on a field goal so you could actually look at those two games and say had they won those They'd be eight and two right now and trying for their ninth win. And they did it without maybe their two best receivers on the field most of the season. Right. Because as you talked about, Emmanuel Hall missed four games after being injured at Purdue with a 
groin problem. He's back in here tonight. Has made some big catches. Beatty with a stiff arm and another good run. Adam Zucker in New York with a Zaxby's update. Zuck. All right, Ness, SEC's champ George are getting the backups in against UMass. James Cook, Dalvin's little brother, rumbling in here. Justin Fields with a couple passing touchdowns as well. 49-13 right now in the third. Georgia Tech next week, then Bama. And Georgia Tech play much better, and that's the kind of offense that has given Georgia fits at times. Here's a loose ball. Tennessee's got one back, I think. They do. Balin Buchanan with a fumble recovery. Successful throw, successful catch. And at the end of it, they do not take care of the football, and Tennessee's going to get it back. He's got him all the way. Should be an easy first down. Turns up, and Buchanan rips it away. Buchanan with the forced fumble and the fumble recovery. Gives it back to the Tennessee offense with 4 11 remaining third quarter. Balin, whose daddy was a good one in the pros, Ray, played for the Falcons and the Colts and the Raiders. Now Keller Christ on the rollout and throws that one over the Tennessee coaches. We saw Marquez Callaway, Brad, get shaken up during that last series. He went to the tent for a while. He's now headed to the locker room. Remember, he took a hit earlier in this game. Both times, it seemed like they were looking at that collarbone area. I'll find out more from the school. All right, Jamie, thanks. Second down at 10 as you look behind Keller, Kristen, Tim Jordan. Blitz on the inside, and Garrett tied that beautifully. He sure did. Kill Garrett only had one other offer. He was going to go to Navy. <laughs> Plays like a Navy he linebacker. He does. He looks just like one, doesn't he? Times this went out, as Brad told you, beats the block inside that time from Richmond. Should have had him, should have been able to cut him off, but if you don't, you get a negative play. That's how you draw it up. We'll be seeing plays just like that in a few weeks, won't we? Yeah, we will. Be all snowy and these white <laughs> uniforms here. Your spotter Clint will be all nervous again. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's what Army did to us last year. All white unis with no names on the back. That's snow no numbers and six inches of snow in Philly. Here's a throw, incomplete, tipped at the last moment. It was intended for Murphy and Khalil Oliver got a hand on it. Rolling out, you only have one direction you're going to throw. And I think it was DeMarcus Acey yeah, that was. was. Acey, yep. Acey's had a good game, you know. Remember, he had to kind of fight through that tough call against Kentucky, had an interception that really changed this football game, don't you think? I mean, that's the play that really changed the yeah, game. Yeah, the 76 yarder yes, that set right, him up at the 11. Right at the end of the half. Scored a quick touchdown. Oh, two guys in motion. That works pretty good in Canada, but not in this league. <laughs> Fair catch taken at the 20. That's very effective. Uh, Arena football. Got a flag on the other side of the field. Two flags. One's going to be double motion. And then we're going to see if there's uh, unnecessary roughness or. Well, that was. Uh, well, they're both holding each other's face, face mask. mask. Oh, he looked like he was going to hit him, but he never hit him. He didn't hit him. <laughs> he faked the punch. Do you get how many yards That's for fainting. a fake? Fainting. Fainting. Do you get like seven yards for that? <laughs> seven and a half yard penalty. Yes. Because he didn't hit him. Half the distance of your chin. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they're going to straighten it out for us here. <laughs> Hubert will have it for us in a second. It's a good one. <laughs> I haven't seen this one before. Remember, it all started out with Tennessee with two men in motion. Illegal motion. Offense. Five yard penalty added to the end of the kick. After the play, a sportsman like conduct. Number two on the receiving team. 
12, I think. Peter. Two and 12. After the play, a sportsman like conduct foul. Number 12 on the receiving team and number six on the kicking team. Those fouls offset. Those two players have their first and fourth of light conduct foul. Well, he had it. He had it right, and then he went back and, and then got it wrong. He had it. Had it yeah. Yeah. He had two he and had, 12. He had two. Yeah. 12 the other one. But 12 divided by two is six. I... <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then the motion penalty. So you get the idea, pretty much. Oh boy. So Missouri's got it at the 21 yard line. With a 40 17 lead late in the third quarter. Demarcus RC has been in front of everything, hasn't he? Demarcus AC, he's been in the middle of everything. Now they just moved it. Now they finally got the uh, the motion. They moved it from the 21 to the 26. Now we're ready to go. There he is. <laughs> Play action, quick flip out to the tight end. And that's Daniel Parker. He's an interesting guy. Started off as a defensive end. They just moved him because of the shortage of players at uh, tight end. And last week he was one of their stars. Caught three balls for 42 yards and a touchdown and was the freshman of the week in the SEC and their defensive coordinator Ryan Walter says we're going to recruit 82 back to play yeah, defense. Yeah he thought he'd get him didn't he? Yeah. He said no he's too good as a defensive end we're going to get him back somehow. Yeah. Had three catches against Vanderbilt and uh, he has shown and really helped this football team without him I don't know where they would be. Vanderbilt had them going pretty well and his blocking has turned up the running game right and really at, at that point in need they got the right guy for this offense. Ron trees over 100 now rushing on 20 carries so five yards a pop for number 34 and here comes some more and about seven more so we get another update in New York here's Adam. All right, Ness, number three Notre Dame now a win away from a perfect regular season. Ian Book to Chase Claypool, a convincing 36-3 win over number 12 Syracuse. They visit USC next week. Easier trip than usual. Wow. Notre Dame with a big win at Yankee Stadium. Well, one thing's for sure. Notre Dame finishes undefeated. They are in with yep. that win right there. There will be no doubt. They control their own destiny and they're taking control of their destiny. We're going to talk about your playoff scenarios uh, here in the fourth quarter. Meanwhile, Drew Locke's got four seconds on the play clock to get the snap here and uh, flags down. And the college football playoff top 10 didn't change any this week. And you know that win by that margin for Notre Dame really helps Michigan's resume, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. And Syracuse is a good team. Right now, Michigan trailing Indiana. That might not help if Indiana pulls off the stunner there. Exactly. They got to get a win. To control your own destiny means you got to have W's. That's right. Lock draw play. Rattree, big open field in the middle. And he's putting together quite a second half. The sophomore out of Raleigh. So the passing game has opened up the running game. The strat the game plan was the other way around, but Drew Locke has opened up this field, and now the Missouri offensive line has taken a little bit of a discouraged Tennessee defense and kind of pounded them right now. Rattree got 16 more on that carry. He'll get a breather and Tyler Beatty will come in number one to take his spot as we wind the third quarter to a close. Beatty got a couple that's it. And a good made the tackle. So another good November game for Missouri. Remember last year they started off terribly and then they won six straight at the end of the year. Lost their bowl game, the Texas Bowl, but 
That second half of the year you could say Barry Odom was the coach of the year in the SEC and right now he's got a pretty good team with 15 minutes left looking for their seventh win of the season and their third in SEC play and they are 15 minutes away from it. That's the end of the third here in Knoxville score Missouri 40 Tennessee 17 we will return to Knoxville right after this message and a word from your local station. As you look in on Neyland Stadium in Knoxville we start the fourth quarter with Missouri in front 40 to 17 and the Tigers at the volunteer 40 yard line Drew Locke throws complete to his tight ends his first catch of the day and I think he actually lost about a yard on this one as we welcome you back to the booth Brad and Gary Jamie's down on the field. We talked about this a little bit earlier but two guys that we respect their opinion right Nick Saban and Kirby Smart said wait till you see Missouri play after they had beaten them but had a tough time doing it and I agree right now. Yes yeah, a veteran offensive line all five starters returning a future NFL quarterback two running backs and I think the addition of Derek Dooley has really settled this offense down. They're not as grab bag as they were before. They have a mission. They're going to be balanced and uh, they're a pretty good football team right now. Third down and eight trying to improve as he throws to Beatty their ball game Beatty almost lost his pants but he picks up the first down. Well Trevin Flowers that time I thought had him down. Remember Beatty had that short throw where he broke a couple tackles earlier and on this one he does it again coming out of the backfield. Breaks that tackle right there and as Brad said kept his pants just high enough. <laughs> this is this is a family show. <laughs> Tyler <laughs> not your fault though but right. you Look picked up 15 they're, yards. They're, they're laughing more than we are. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> you better tighten up that belt son. <laughs> Pick up a 15 down to the 25. <laughs> Roundtree comes back in while Tyler pulls up his drawers on the other side. And back to Roundtree they go. Trying to follow his blockers for about three. Near the 22, but Thule made the tackle. So the yards are piling up. Did talk to Derek Thule as they're still giving him a little bit of joke about his style of running and his <laughs> attire. <laughs> It's a good combination. Uh, it's fun when you can have that much fun on that, the road in the SEC. That's going to make a few highlights. Yeah, I, I can tell so. you that right now. <laughs> so second down at eight at the 23. <laughs> Here comes a blitz by the Volunteers. Roundtree runs right into it. Might have gotten a yard. Alexis Johnson in on the stop. Another one of the seniors on the defensive front for the Volunteers. When you think about it, no starters on offense that are seniors for Tennessee. The defense has quite a few of them, but only 13, including the walk ons, were out there on the field with the coach and their parents and their family today. So uh, the rebuilding continues. It's not an easy rebuild in this league. You're no. matching up against some of the best football teams in, in, the, in the country, and uh, there are NFL players galore. Yeah, that's a misfire by Locke, incomplete attempted for Jonathan Johnson. Saw a projection for the first round of the draft. Anywhere from 15 to 17 players going in the first round are SEC players. At a lot of different positions too. Yes. And the one I saw did not have Drew Locke in the first round but I think once they see him and test him and talk to him and see how big he is close to six foot four 225 pounds I think he's going to climb to the first round as well. McCann will try 40 yard field goal. And the kick is up and good. So attack three more on for the Tigers. With 12 minutes to go they're in command. Missouri leads 43 17. Now it's time for our Exxon Mobil game recap between the six and four Tigers and the five and five volunteers coming into Neyland Stadium on senior day. Kyle Phillips one of those seniors on the defense for the volunteers. Tough day for Jared Garantano. He had not even attempted a pass and had already been sacked twice. That put him out of the ball game. Tyler Beatty's four yard touchdown run made it 13 to 7 Missouri. Demarcus Acey, this was the game turner. An interception, a 76 yard return, got it down to the 11 yard line. 
And that's when Drew Locke hooked up Jonathan Johnston. That touchdown made it 26 to 10. Two touchdowns both in the first half. Keller Chris came in. And Ty Chandler with the score got things going for Tennessee, but then a costly fumble by El Zamin. That one scooped up, and it was a scoop and score on a fumble recovery for a touchdown. And Missouri's just kept pushing the pedal now today, 43 to 17. Take a peek at Drew Locke's last pass. Looked like he slipped and twisted his right foot or knee or something on his play. Went to the sidelines. See how his ankle, his ankle kind of gave out as he went to throw that pass. And he kind of limped. The coaches were asking him if he was okay when he got to the sidelines. Something to keep an eye on before he goes into his last game of the season next week. So 12 minutes remaining for Tennessee. Tonight, uh, 1030 Eastern over on CBS Sports Network. They'll miss the San Diego State Aztecs colliding with Fresno State to see who will get one step closer to the Mountain West Championship game. That's on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Rich Waltz, Aaron Murray, Cassie McKinney will bring it to you. Aaron Murray still on top. Demaria Crockett's in street clothes now. Yeah, he was coming in. I talked to Derek Dooley at halftime. He came into the game with a strain Achilles. That's why he did not play as much football in the game as uh, usually we see. And you see him in a boot now over on the sideline. The other player that we didn't see was Jalen Knox in this game. Let's bring in Jamie. Uh, Demaria Crockett came out with the street clothes on, and while he may be out for this game, his spirits are still high as he went right over to Tyler Beatty just to make sure he kind of ribbed him a few more times as if he didn't get enough <laughs> on that crossing pattern on that play. <laughs> Keller Chris down to his last couple of games as a collegiate player, and there would be one more if they make a bowl game, but they got to win next week against Vanderbilt. Keller running for his life, and he throws this one away. We talked about the standings, college football playoff standings, and here's Gary's playoff picture. Yeah, you know, controlling your own destiny, even though Michigan's fourth. I still think they don't control their own destiny for one reason. Georgia and Alabama play each other. So let's look at the two possibilities. If they get into the finals and Alabama wins, I think Michigan's in if they win out. But scenario two happens might be a different story because what would happen if Georgia win? They'd be in, but there'd be an argument about that fourth spot. And those two teams, when we come back after this play, we'll show you. I'm sure a lot of you have figured this out already. Keller Christ, that was a pass. He got leveled as he was attempting to throw. But, okay, that question mark, who's the question mark? Yeah, the question mark is that will be the argument of all arguments. Two of the Blue Bloods, Alabama and Michigan. Who gets that fourth spot? Should Alabama lose in the SEC championship? And when it goes to the committee, Anything can happen. Of course, we loaded all this stuff earlier, and Indiana last yeah, report was yeah. leading Michigan, you know, so that, that would that, erase all of that. that. That's all. Control your own destiny means you can't win. Yeah, you okay. got to win. So assuming Michigan wins, and it's not a sure thing. Now Michigan is in front, the truck tells us. 22 to 17. Here's Floyd on the punt return going the wrong way. The ball is out. I think he was down. Flags are down. Tennessee scoops it up just in case. And Floyd is still down, and that's not a good look right there. When those when those doctors and trainers run out full speed, you hold your breath. Okay, he's starting to move his extremities, thank goodness, but I think we might have another one of those targetings, and this is why no matter all of us are trying to figure out what exactly the call is, the reason there is the emphasis on targeting are plays just like this. You can feel the hush of a crowd of uh, not sold out today, but over 88,000 here at Neyland Stadium. Rashad Floyd, a junior out of Gulfport, Mississippi. And they wouldn't be turning them over if it was really right. right. That's, that's good news right there. So let's see. Personal foul. Targeting. Kicking team. Number 21. Right at the end. Yep. 
The previous play. He was basically going to be whistled down. Yeah. There wasn't even any reason to come in. Third guy in down. leading with the top of your helmet. That is textbook right there. You have a player Shannon defenseless Reed. on the tackle right there, and you lead with the helmet. And that one's obvious to everybody. There's no doubt about that one. Shannon Reed with the penalty. More importantly, we'll check on Rashard when we come back. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Sonic. Allstate. Jared. And by Bud Light. I'd love to tell you that Rashad Floyd is perfectly okay, but he's not. And uh, that's about the best he's been walking since we left you during that time out to get him to the sideline and subsequently to the locker room. Yeah, but, but he is walking. And it was a confirmed targeting on 21. Shannon Reed, so he's gone for this game and the first half of Vanderbilt next week. And we hope uh, Rashad's okay. And again, I, I think all the people involved, is, as much as the coaches and we sometimes can't figure out the call, the overall goal of taking that play out is worth a couple of questionable calls. Sure. I guess, right? Yep. I mean, that's, that's where we are. I mean, as, as much as we try to figure out exactly, it's an inexact call. That is going to be the longest walk of his life for a while, I'm sure. Any, I don't know if he's going to remember much of it either. Well, that's probably true. <laughs> anyway, hopefully he's going to be okay. From midfield, Brown Tree, in the middle of the pile, goes for four. So, Missouri, this is going to be their fourth win in their. Last five games, and that only loss was that controversial ending against Kentucky. But this will help uh, their bowl game on where they're heading. Football's a lot of fun when you got a big lead, isn't it? Yeah, sure is. A lot of smiles. <laughs> yes. Jeremy, Jeremy Pruitt knew the work was ahead of him. He's got a long way to go with this team. And second and six, round three again. A couple more. Back to the college football playoff talk that we started before that injury. Yeah, you know, so Ness, uh, controlling your own destiny is nice because when it goes to the committee. <laughs> here's what happens. You're, here's what happens. There's a lot of things they can go to. You're not exactly sure which one will be the tipping point. Will it be champion, conference champion? Will it be the eyeball test? Will it be top 25 wins? You're not exactly sure. And that committee, if it gets down, to two teams, Alabama and Michigan. Remember, it's, that's not Alabama and Kansas State. That's right. Michigan and Alabama, two of the Blue Bloods deciding which guy is the fourth best team in the playoff. Now, we're not on the committee and we're not watching the game, but well, what about the eyeball test for Michigan if they are close with Indiana? Well, you know, it, it's, it's interesting. You get a, a positive with Notre Dame the way they blow out Syracuse and then okay. you get a negative for having a close game I guess against Indiana. And that's why it, it, you're just at the mercy of that committee. You know who's the smartest guy I, I think in college football. Archie Manning for getting off the, off committee. the committee. Yes. He's a smart man. I'm telling you that right now. Archie's going to be honored at the Legends Banquet the night before the SEC Championship in Atlanta. Look forward to that. Yeah, I think he saw this like a big old hanging curve. It goes, I'm, not <laughs> I'm out of this thing. I'm not doing this. This is like I played for the Saints for 11 right. years. I don't need this. Yes, I don't need to have people going, why did you do this? <laughs> <laughs> he let those guys' ADs handle it. Yes. Oh. His feet touch in. It is a touchback. Well, it's the ball. It's not his feet. But the ball must have been where his feet are. Yes, that's probably true. Marcus <laughs> Acey again. Let's check from the. Oh, we got, we got camp. cameras everywhere on this one, right? And there's oh, the ball. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's right where his foot is. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday on CBS discover the show critics say is gripping refreshing and surprising 
From Dick Wolf, executive producer of Law and Order, comes FBI new episode Tuesday after NCIS. Before we're done here, we'll have the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. And a lot of dancing going on, but it's not going to be a victory dance, I'm afraid, for the volunteer fans. With nine minutes remaining, Kevin Chris play fake. And again, asked to throw it away as he was getting pressured. Jamal Brooks was putting the heat on him. And he got hit after he let go of that one. Yeah, Jamal Brooks plays for Cale Gilbert at middle linebacker, and he just runs down. And he went right through it. And, and again, you know, the college quarterbacks actually take a more strenuous hit. Uh, that's in the NFL is now being outlawed, landing on the quarterback. Can't do that anymore. Putting your full body yes. weight on there. Yeah, college quarterbacks take a few more hits than the NFL $20 million guys, I guess. <laughs> Chris throws on the run. Yeah. It's picked off by DeMarcus AC for the second time today. And DeMarcus. All the way back to the 11 yard line. He's had a big day. And we got a flag down as well. Thought he had man coverage. AC took his drop from the corner position, baited the throw, and had it all the way. Watch, he's up here. He stays in this area, and then when he sees the throw, he collapses on it. He knows where that receiver is, collapses on the throw, and makes the pickoff. And an interception against Kentucky, and on two today. I wonder if Nate Anderson, number 29, is a block. In the back? I don't know, blindside block, you know, or something like that, because it was a flag right in his area. Peel back block. Kind of Personal foul, targeted. Right. Defense, number 29, doing the return. That penalty is 15 yards from the spot of the foul. The previous play is under further review. Yeah, he kind of jumped at him. I didn't see if he hit him with his helmet or not, but that's the look again. Defenseless player on a peel back block. Well, he sees it coming. No, he does not. Mm. Good call. That peel back block, I, that's one of the ones I would like to get out of this game. It's on right on Jawan yeah. Jennings' chin. Kind of tried to hit him with his hands a little bit, but his helmet connected a little bit like Devin White's hit on the quarterback on that play. Uh, just high enough to be called. Let's see if it's confirmed. After review, the ruling of targeting is confirmed. The penalty is 15 yards from the spot of the foul. Missouri retains possession of the football, first down. Well, Tennessee you, lost a player, yeah. and now when Missouri's you, lost one. When you hit high, you put yourself at the mercy of the replay official. I think it's the right call. Juwan Jennings does not see it. He's blind, he's defenseless, and he hits him high. Unnecessary. So he's going to miss the first half of the Arkansas game the day after Thanksgiving. And Taylor Powell is in at quarterback. Drew Locke's day is done. Powell, a redshirt freshman out of, speaking of Arkansas, out of Fayetteville. Oh, loose ball. And I guess he got on top of it. Simi Bukhari, freshman, bobbled that about three times, but held onto it. By the way, true freshman Simi Bakari. Now this will be his fifth game, I believe, that he's played in. He had played in four, so now that makes his red shirt burned. Missouri with the luxury of playing some backup guys here at the eight minute mark with one a big lead. Of, one of the big questions next year is who replaces that guy for this yeah. Missouri team? Yeah, we asked the coaches that. And yes. They're not quite sure. They say we have confidence in the guys we have on the roster, but they're looking around for maybe a grad transfer, that type of thing. And of course, there's. One name that's been flashed out there, it seems like everywhere, and that's Kelly Bryant who yeah. left Clemson. He's one of the names that is rumored to be looking at Missouri, he's looking at Arkansas, he's looking at Auburn, he's looking at a few places. Mississippi State. Kind of a free agent sort of situation. I heard even the name uh, Miami was one of the schools he was looking at. Meanwhile, Missouri just trying to keep it on the ground. The clock wound down. Drew Locke with his offensive lineman. Always good to have some special handshakes for the big eaters in front of you. 
protected him extremely well today. He really didn't have a lot of pressure on him at all. Nice run. Almost a face mask at the end of that by Bakari. Well, Drew Locke has put on a show, hasn't he? Yep. He's taken the slam passes to keep the linebackers on us in the RPO game. He's thrown the ball accurately all over the field. There's not a spot on this field that he cannot get the ball to and quickly. He is we, definitely a weapon. I told you at halftime, I thought his two best throws were the ones that were dropped. Well, yeah, I, I thought one of his best throws was the haul on that touchdown where he came in, he stopped, he went out clear across the field right on a dime. But you're right, he's showed the whole package here today. Another first down run by McCarry. Had that big win against Florida because the whole thing is he hadn't beat a top 25 team, but some guys that are doing pretty good in the NFL never wow. beat any top 25 teams either. How about that? Yep. And they're doing just fine. Well, you know, I mean, when you play for Texas Tech and Cal and, or Missouri to beat Frank, I mean, you don't have the top talent in the league. So when you go against those top teams, you have to play at a very high level to beat them. And I know both for Barry Odom and Drew Locke, that Florida win was huge. It sure was. They just keep feeding the car. We're going to work our way down around the five minute mark. So, talking to Jeremy Pruitt, he knew that there was a building job before he got here. And once he got here, he knew there was a building job in front of him. He's been happy with the way his team has improved this year. But I think deep down, he knew he was a little short on talent this year. He does not have those game breakers, those playmakers that uh, the rest of this league has. And he's obviously young at cornerback. He's got a lot of building to do. And this guy getting some playing time and he's not going to slow down the freshman out of Round Rock, Texas. Timmy Bakari getting some work here in the late stages of this game and looking pretty good doing it. Has it down to the nine yard line. Yeah, because Beatty's looked well, good at it. Yep. Bakari, I mean, they got that's four deep at running back. And Crockett and Roundtree are yep. not seniors either. Crockett's a junior, Roundtree's a sophomore. So they got some good backs coming back for next season, without a doubt. So Tennessee has to think about a big game next week again at Vanderbilt. They're five and six. They got to get that win to get a bowl game and all the benefits that go with it, mostly at this time. Just having the extra practices for the football team. He might have a first down, and I think he does. So it's going to be first and goal. And Missouri's not trying to pile it on here. They're just handing the football off and trying to use clock. Gary talked about this, the win over Florida and how big it is. And this just shows you what the emotions of a head coach. And that's his youngest son, Garrett. A pretty happy coach and, and a happy quarterback after a huge win. And there's his defensive coordinator as well, Ryan Walters. So those kind of victories don't come along so easy in this conference. You know, it's funny when he was talking about his son, he goes, you know, they get it. They know how to read now. They, yeah. they, they. And he said the two oldest kids, they're invested. They yes. got it. But the young ones just started to figure it out. Right. And he said they, they understood how big that win was for Pop and the program. Well, the other way around for the program and dad. Yeah, basically. right. And inches shy. Bowl appearances in two of the first three seasons. Pretty good group right there. Yes. Barry's going to join Coach Faro and Devine, Warren Powers. So last year, seven and six. I mentioned the loss was in the Texas Bowl. They're going to be seven and four here in a couple of minutes. And one more game to go on Friday. You'll see it on CBS against Arkansas. Well, when Gary Pinkle brought this team into the SEC, it was a different looking team. They had that big 12 fielder. They were great pass rushers. They scored a lot of points, kept you off balance. But when Barry came here, he said, we need to change and tweak it just a bit. That means they're going to be three yards in a cloud of dust, but a little more stout on the offensive defensive lines. And I think he's on his way there. Yep. Yeah, they used to have those edge guys that sacked yes. a lot of quarterbacks. Yep. Now they got some meteor guys. <laughs> That's right. Fourth and inches uh, to Tennessee jump offside. Maybe a free play. The throw is incomplete, broken up. 
And I don't know if there was a false start or an offside on Tennessee. We'll wait and see. Offside. Defense, number 90. Half the distance to the goal. The result of the penalty is the first down. So it's first and goal. Yeah, right inside. I think it's right here. Yeah. That's an easy one. You know he has a free play and he just uh, very smartly throws it out to the outside. That's only the 13th pass that even though it doesn't count because of the penalty that Tyler Taylor Powell has uh, thrown this year. You know we've seen Will Greer at the beginning and now we're seeing uh, Drew Locke. Uh, a little similar styles. I think Drew's got a little stronger arm. I do too. Think? Yeah. I think he spins it a little tighter, but I'll take Will Greer too. I know. Both of them with great futures, bright futures. And Tennessee seats some quarterbacks this year, I'll tell you that. Got a guy in Alabama's not too bad either. Yep, but two. And Jake Fromm. Jake Fromm. Jared Stidham has not had the year he thought, but he's got a he's an NFL prospect. They've seen five of them. He wants him to throw. He's saying it's an RPO. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Take your chance. <laughs> that was a guy that could have gone last year. Drew Locke, give him credit. Coming back, being a senior. Oh, he's helped himself, boy. I'll tell you. I what. think so too. Getting a year with Derek Dooley and his NFL influence. He's calmed him down. He's much more of a, I think, finished product. I mean, it, it may not be happening right away, but I think now. I, I did like a team like the Giants. Uh, I mean, they're going to look at him. And there's a finish to the drive on the ground for Bakari for the touchdown. <laughs> and uh, the extra point is good. It's going to be a half a hundred here for the Tigers. They came in averaging just under 36 a game. And after another scoring drive here of nine plays, they just tried to use the clock, and they did use almost six minutes. Yeah, it just shows you sometime, you know, if you're Tennessee's defense, you're feeling good about yourself the way you handled Kentucky, but Kentucky's a one-dimensional team. Missouri is not. Extra point up and good, and it is 50 to 17. With 2.53 remaining in the ball game, a happy captain senior quarterback, soon to be an NFL player next year. Now it's time for the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. You wonder what would have happened had this not occurred for Tennessee in this football game. Keller Christ, underthrown ball, intended for Marquez Callaway, and Demarcus AC returns at 76 yards to set up a Missouri touchdown and really the Tigers never looked back after that swing late in the second quarter that gave them a more commanding lead and obviously now I've gone on to score 50 points here against the volunteers. And Tennessee with 2.53 remaining. We'll take it to the 25. One of the interesting parts of talking to Jeremy Pruitt yesterday was his comment about the Auburn Alabama game. He thought that Auburn would play their best game of the year against Alabama that they love playing. He's got a lot of experience with that yep. uh, Iron Bowl and he said you watch they're, they're Those guys will love to play in this football game and it will take a lot out of Alabama. Alabama good football team but he said it would be a good game. And of course last year. It was Auburn that had back to back wins over then number one Georgia and Alabama back to back weeks and then faced Georgia in the SEC championship game this year it's going to be Alabama and Georgia we already determined that earlier than it's ever been determined. But Alabama or Auburn we know you know some really good defensive players. They'll yeah. be up for that game and they'll get to put a game on tape against some high level you know Alabama players and they'll be into it. So will we. So we hope you join us next Saturday from Tuscaloosa. The 83rd edition of Alabama and Auburn. Tim Jordan, big opening. And Tim's not done yet. Out to the 43 yard line. Talked about offensive coordinator Derek Dulu. 
Looks a little different not wearing that orange. Last time he was on this field, he lost as head coach of Tennessee. And then today, a little different feeling. He's like, yeah, I like it up here. This is this is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie. Well, when I talked to Drew Locke this week, I asked him about coming to Tennessee. He said, oh, Derek Dooley, he's fired up. I said, really? He goes, I mean, no, he remains the same guy <laughs> week in and week out. He backtracked a little bit, but it was there. You could tell there was an edge. <laughs> and meeting with Derek last night. Just happy, I think, to be back in the SEC and coaching again after you know, a five-year stint in the it, NFL. Interesting what he said, though. You know, um, he missed being the guy getting criticized. You know, he's coaching the NFL. He had a spot. He wasn't the offensive coordinator head coach. And, you know, you're you're under the gun in this league. You know, if you're a head coach, quarterback, or offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, or play-by-play -play or analyst, <laughs> you're under the gun, okay? Under and, a microscope. And he said he missed it. Yeah. You know, I, he said, I, I like the competitiveness, yes, but... I wanted to feel, you know, being online, being in, in right in the middle. There's of something about that challenge. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, maybe the final play of the game. And it's going to be a big gainer for Ty Chandler. So Chandler and Jordan add to their totals a little bit. Their stats are going to look better. Reminder, Capital One postgame show. He's looking the guys coming up when we're through here which is about one more play. Yeah, it may take their rushing yards to respectability now. You know, prior to that, they were in the 30s to 40 yards rushing for the game. They're going to get a close, what, to 82 now, I think. But uh, it was the no-run attack, and Tennessee, without some help for their pass blocking, without a running attack, just don't has, doesn't out have enough offense. So Barry Odom hasn't lost a November game now in two years so far. Got another one coming up on Friday against Arkansas, but... A convincing win on the road today for the Tigers to go to seven and four and three and four volunteers still need a win to be bowl eligible they can beat Vanderbilt next week but they dropped to five and six here on their final game on their home field for 2018. Drew Locke big game for him on the road. And Barry Odom, a happy coach with the seventh win of the season under his belt. We'll be back to wrap it up in a moment. <laughs>